So this uh, um, idea of nascent hydrogen is actually a really interesting idea. It's one of the problems making a graphene sheet out of graphene oxide is that a lot of the reducing agents are actually in aqueous solution. And the problem with that, of course, is the graphene oxide wants to disperse. And if you're bubbling something on the uh, side of it, it's going to lift flakes off and you're going to get a poor sheet. Um, but if we lay out an aluminium foil, and that's exactly what I've done here, is a bit of kitchen foil and I've put some masking tape around it to hold it onto a bit of tile. And we drip a load of go on there and get a nice graphene oxide coating on it, let that dry, and then paint the top of it with some kind of resistive glue. Uh, and in my case, I'm just going to use ordinary floor varnish. We paint the top with a couple of coats of floor varnish, flip the whole thing round and put it in a bath of weak hydrochloric acid. Then the acid will react with the aluminium at the graphene oxide interface, creating the nascent hydrogen, which should reduce the graphene oxide back to graphene. And because it's got an underleaf um, coating now of varnish, in this case, and that will hold it stable while the reaction happens. And then we can pick out a sheet of graphene. Or at least that's the plan. Now, it's only a proof of concept, so there are lots of things wrong with this little system. So although I've tried to stretch the aluminium out and put it as flat as I can, there's obviously lots of little wrinkles on it. Uh, and I'm going to drip coat the go onto it, which is not the best way of, of coating something evenly. So it would obviously be much better if we had a spin coater and we had some kind of vacuum system that pulled the aluminium foil flat. But as a proof of concept, like I say, I think it's going to be a, a reasonable job. So I've taken a square of coat from the kitchen foil, and here I've got some graphene oxide. And this is forming uh, 4 milligrams per milliliter concentration in there. And a pipette. And just pipette some on, trying to get a fairly even coating. And then when you've covered that surface, and it should stop at the boundary, incidentally, of where the uh, masking tape is, but when you've covered that surface, just put it somewhere to dry, and it'll dry, hopefully, in a nice even sheet. So I'm going to continue until that whole surface is covered, then I'll put it on a bioradiator to dry, and when it's dry, I'll get back to you. Okay, so I coated my aluminium sheet in graphene oxide, and I've put quite a thick coating on, and that's really just so you can see. Um, there are obviously the problems that we were discussing earlier. Uh, with an additional one, there are some pinholes in the graphene oxide. And there'll be pinholes on it because I didn't bother cleaning the aluminium. Uh, so if you're doing this as a final product, now uh, like I say, what you probably need to do is get some method to hold it down better, uh, a better dispersion method, so like spin coating or something like that. And don't forget to clean the surface of your aluminium uh, before you put it on. But I'm going to press ahead because, we, as I said, this really is just a proof of concept idea. And we want to see how the thing works, um, just basically. Now, having coated it in uh, graphene oxide, the next step is to coat it in some kind of uh, protective coating. Now, I'm going to use this stuff, which is just varnish. It's floor varnish. You can buy varnish with lots of different formulations, and one of them is what's called a microporous uh, formulation. It allows the wood underneath to breathe, and that means it's got tiny little holes in it. That could actually be useful. So if you wanted to coat this in a microporous varnish, then once you remove the aluminium, what you'll have is a freestanding graphene microporous sheet. And that, that, I can see hundreds of uses for that, for instance, in water filters, something like that. So, um, when we coat it with the varnish, you basically put one layer on, leave it for a couple of hours, put on another layer. I'm going to put three layers on, then leave it for another couple of hours and put on another layer. Then it needs at least 24 hours to dry properly. So that's what we're going to do, basically, is just coat the thing in varnish, leave it for a couple of hours, and then re-coat it, leave it for a couple of hours, and re-coat it. <coughs> now, obviously, I'm not coating it particularly well. You could use a roller, you could use a brush, but a bit of paper wiped over it is as good as anything else. This will actually dry clear, but you'll see that later.
And like I say, just leave that to dry for two hours. So I'm going to leave it to dry, recoat, leave it to dry, and after it's had a 24-hour period, I'll get back to you. Okay, so it's had three coats of varnish and I've left it overnight to dry and there it is, one varnish coated graphene oxide coated aluminium sheet. Now obviously the thing to do with it next is to separate it out um, from the sticky tape so that you can lift it off and I'm just doing that by drawing a trimming knife blade along the edges and that will give me quite a large sheet of graphene oxide coated aluminium. And the plan then is to drop that into some hydrochloric acid. To let the hydrochloric acid eat away at the aluminium and the nascent hydrogen reduce the graphene oxide back to graphene, in which case the graphene will be reduced with the supporting membrane, there we go, graphene, graphene oxide will be reduced to graphene with the supporting membrane of the varnish behind it, so there we go, one aluminium sheet coated with graphene oxide and then a nice plastic coating of varnish on top of that. Now you'll notice that this aluminium sheet is quite shiny, and it's quite shiny because um, cooking aluminium they uh, put a sheet of a little bit of plastic on it, that bit of plastic that they put on it uh, helps protect it and keep it shiny. So the hydrochloric acid will take a little bit of time to eat through that plastic before it hits the aluminium. And when it hits the aluminium, it'll start to go a little crazy and generate hydrogen. Now, um, I guess that I could put that whole sheet in and that it will produce a sheet that have a comparable size. But what I'm going to do is cut it up into smaller pieces, squares about that big, and um, do separate squares because obviously we're testing it. But there is the sheet all ready to go. So I cut the sheet and put it into this um, bath. The bath is 15% uh, hydrochloric acid and I've placed the aluminium down working on the idea that the hydrogen will have to roll to the edges and so we'll have more uh, contact time with the graphene oxide. I don't really know which way around to do it, I'm just guessing. So, um, could try it the other way and see what happens. I'm trying it this way. Now, it takes a little bit of time for the reaction to get going, but that's the way it is, as I explained. And you can see little bubbles of hydrogen coming off now. OK, you can see the reaction really underway now. There's lots of gas bubbles being generated at the edges. Um, it's about sort of 15 minutes into it at the moment, so it's not particularly exciting. The idea of putting it this way is that the uh, aluminium chloride dross um, bits and pieces drop off the bottom and uh, leave it nice and clean. But as I say, I'm guessing of this way around. I'll try it the other way around as well in a minute when this one's done. But you can sheet, um, see the sheet going gradually black as the aluminium's eaten away and you can see the gas bubbles being generated and that's hydrogen. As I say, when this one's had a go, I'll, turn, uh, I'll do another one the other way up and splash some acid on the top of it and we'll see what happens with that one. But it's quite a gentle reaction, really, and quite time-consuming. Like I say, it's about 15 minutes in, so not particularly quick or exciting. Not, not from that standpoint. I think it's pretty exciting. And as I say, you can see it actually going black as the uh, hydrogen is eat, um, eat, uh, sorry, it's the hydrochloric acid eats away the aluminium. Kind of cool. OK, there you go. Not very exciting. A bit like watching a film develop, actually. But the uh, reaction is pretty much finished, and it's the same on both sides. Obviously not quite the same, and um, that brown is turned to black. I'm just putting it in some distilled water to give it a little wash there and wash off any excess hydrochloric acid and any other aluminium salts. And that was trying it with the aluminium facing down. Now let's put a bit in there with the aluminium facing up, and we'll see what happens. Again, it takes a little while to get it going. That took about 15-20 minutes, so we'll give that... 15 or 20 minutes and see what happens. And there's the reaction starting after a couple of minutes and as you'd expect it's a bit more even. Uh, the problem with the other one is that bubbling and popping lifted the thing out of the uh, acid and knocked the bits of aluminium off, which I didn't really expect, but it did. This one obviously is uh, much more even. And here's the reaction after about 10 minutes. You can see that it's uh, getting covered nicely in bubbles and it has a bit of a tendency to lift up. 
So I keep just popping it back down again with a rod just to keep it submerged there. I guess it's lifting up because the hydrogen is getting caught and the um, varnish as well is hydrophobic so that's helping it lift up. But I just keep resting it down there and letting that reaction go on. And a couple of minutes later and as you can see the reaction is well under progress now. It's going to kind of greenish colour and that's because of the aluminium chloride in there. But that's really cooking now, eh? So, when the reaction is over, it's going to be pretty obvious. Uh, the aluminium will be gone, the fizzing will be stopped, and you will find that your graphene oxide has gone black. So, when that's happened, give the rinse and some water to clean it off, and you're pretty much there. Okay, so there we go. Um, I cut these to this size because that's the size of the bath that I had, but obviously you could cut them to any size you wanted and put them in any bath size that you wanted. Now, the results of this is they've gone quite silvery, as you can see, quite silvery grey, and I guess you'd expect that. And the resistance of them is a sort of 17K kind of range, which is pretty poor um, for the thickness of the uh, graphene oxide there, but I guess it's no surprise, really. Um, ways of improving this, well I can think of hundreds of ways of improving this to make it actually a viable project. Uh, one way would be to clearly give a thinner coat of graphene oxide and a thinner coat of the um, varnish because I put three coats on and as you can see from the results of this, it's pretty thick actually, it's about as thick as um, a plastic bag. So it's pretty thick, so you could make that a hell of a lot thinner by coating it properly. Now obviously I just splashed everything on because it was a proof of concept and it was just an idea that it was playing with. So I made everything uneven and everything quite thick and everything quite wrinkly so you could see it and we could try it out and see what happened. None of that's actually any good, so to be honest I'm really quite surprised that we got any results at all. But we got pretty good results given all of that. So ways to improve it would be um, some way to make sure that the aluminium laid flat. Now I used kitchen foil because that's what I've got and that's actually relatively thick. Um, and as the acid begins to eat away the foil, then the first few layers of the foil that it eats away aren't doing anything because they're not in contact with the graphene oxide, so there's no hydrogen getting to the graphene oxide, so there's no reduction going on. So a thinner foil would obviously be um, one step forward. Uh, a thinner layer of graphene oxide so that there was enough hydrogen being generated to reduce the graphene oxide that you've got. Given this is so thick and we had um, relatively little of the hydrogen actually attacking the graphene oxide, quite a lot of that hasn't actually been reduced. So <clears throat> it's still sitting there as graphene oxide. Now, that's not a problem in itself because all you would really do is um, <coughs> give it another reduction process so you could pop it in a bath at 80 degrees centigrade with some, some ascorbic acid and some um, ammonia and that would reduce the rest of the graphene oxide that hasn't been reduced down to graphene and that would up the conductivity of that sheet quite dramatically. You'd get a sort of couple of hundred ohms out of it or something like that, my guess. I don't know. I may well try that. But obviously the whole thought of this is that it would be a... Um, one-stop shop to producing uh, graphene sheets and if your graphene was actually spread on thinner so that the proportion of hydrogen being generated as the acid was eat, uh, eating away the aluminium to the amount of graphene oxide available for reduction would be greater and so more of the graphene oxide would be reduced. Thinking about annealing, um, obviously <coughs> if we annealed that for a while and you're thinking about sort of 120 to 150 degrees for half an hour in an inner atmosphere would actually uh, anneal the graphene and cause that graphene to um, mend its defects and again the conductivity would go up. Now um, these would all be things that you would think about if you wanted to turn this into a process. So using a thinner foil, spreading on the graphene better, you may be using rod coating or spray coating. Um, <coughs> maybe playing around with the concentration of the acids in the bath so the reaction was slower and it had more contact time with the actual graphene oxide. Uh, the substrate that I've used, which is uh, with a coating on this, but has ended up being uh, the substrate that's holding it all together, was just ordinary floor varnish, again, just because that's what I had available. You uh, can get lots of different kinds of varnishes. You can get mesoporous varnishes, in which case you would have created a mesoporous graphene film. Um, you could maybe coat it in something like a um, plastic and a solvent, so um, some PET maybe, or some polystyrene, you coat it in that, 
reduce it back down to graphene and then pop that into the, pe into the plastic solvent and what you'll get is a freestanding graphene sheet because as the solvent eats away the plastic, the graphene sheet will lift off in the solvent and just float on top of the solvent. So it's a route again to um, a freestanding graphene sheet. So really very interesting process I thought as an extension of this nascent hydrogen um, idea and that a lot could be done with to actually make um, full scale graphene sheets as big as you liked and, and really as thin or as thick as you wanted to do them. So it certainly looks like a really good process for doing that, for making these sheets success, as big or as thick or as uh, thin as you actually want them. So I found that really quite interesting and exciting, so I thought I'd share it with you and, and hopefully it sparks off some ideas and um, people out there will play with this a little bit. I'm certainly going to play with it a bit more and see what happens with it. But it's a basic idea, I think that really works superbly and I'm actually really kind of um, excited by it. So I hope you enjoyed it too and thank you very much for watching.